This is probably the most random meal prep video I have ever made, but that's what I'm here to do is show you guys just like random stuff from my real life in hopes that I might inspire you to do something similar. So I'm gonna be prepping a bunch of things today. I'm making some taco meat. I'm also washing some produce, making some pasta salad. I made some homemade ranch dressing to go with our veggie tray. I'm also going to be making some homemade Chex Mix, which turned out really good, a delicious blueberry cheesecake you guys are not gonna want to miss this recipe and then I'm also making some breakfast sandwiches and a new recipe for breakfast casserole that turned out really delicious All right, so I am going to meal prep some breakfast casserole. This is the recipe I'm going to use. It is a taste of home recipe. I printed this off, actually it looks like in 2020 and I've never made this yet, so I'm excited to try it. It has good reviews. So instead of bacon, I'm gonna use sausage because I have a pound of it on hand that I got on sale at hy V. I I'm also gonna use some cottage cheese, some frozen hash browns. These are shredded hash browns that I, um, thawed in the refrigerator and then it calls for cheddar cheese and Swiss cheese and then I've got eggs here it calls for six eggs it doesn't call for any salt and pepper probably because the original recipe uses bacon and bacon is pretty salty um, but I probably will add a little bit of salt and pepper to it as well so I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350 okay so I decided I was gonna drain the hash browns because after I thawed them they were a little bit watery and I don't want it to make the um, breakfast casserole watery and then I have my sausage here in a skillet and I'm just going to saute this until it's all browned and then just drain it on some paper towels. So I beat my eggs in this um, bowl here. I'm gonna add the cottage cheese. You need a cup and a half of that. This container is exactly 12 ounces, so it's convenient. I'm gonna add some pepper. Probably just about a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add my um, shredded hash browns in here started out those as being uh, four cups, but they <laughs> kind of shrunk down a little bit after they thawed. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some cheddar cheese and some Swiss cheese. Okay, so this is all mixed up. This is the potato egg cheese mixture, and then I've got my sausage here that I just drained on some paper towels. I'm gonna try my best to fold this into here without making too big of a mess. I should have used a bigger bowl. Um, but I also sprayed my dish, so as soon as I can get this mixed together, I'll transfer it to the baking dish. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the oven and bake it for 35 to 40 minutes. All right, so here is our completed casserole. I did bake this at 350 for about 40 minutes. Um, I did try a piece because I wanted to tell you guys how it was before I recommended it, and it is really good. I would definitely recommend it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, you can see here I've cut this into squares, and these are really obviously easy to heat up during the week. For breakfast, I think some hot sauce on sauce, on sauce, hot sauce on sauce, hot sauce on top. <laughs> would be really good and so I'm gonna put these in a container and then we can have them for the rest of the week I want to take a quick moment and thank today's video sponsor ladder I love partnering with ladder here on my channel because as we all know life is fragile and I think it's a must that everyone have affordable term life insurance 
My family is obviously the most important thing in my life to me. And with the rising cost of living, it is super important that you have that financial cushion for your family. We had an unexpected death in our family a couple months ago, and I can tell you having life insurance made it so much easier and gave us so much peace of mind. On that note, it really does make sense why people should get life insurance, especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. With Ladder, for example, a healthy 35-year-old man could get $1 million in coverage for just $35 per month. I would say giving your family a million dollars of financial cushion is well worth the price. And if you think so too, choose Ladder. Ladder makes it fast and easy to apply for coverage. You just need a few minutes and a phone or a laptop to apply. Ladder's smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. There are no hidden fees and you can cancel any time. You can also get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. And since life insurance costs more as you age, now is the time to cross it off your list. Adam and I both have term life insurance policies on ourselves as well. Obviously, it's really important since we have young kids and a mortgage to pay off in the event that something happens to one of us. But if you guys want to go to the description box below, you can go to ladderlife.com slash Jen today to get your free quote. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash Jen, ladderlife.com slash Jen to get your free quote. The link will be in the description box below. Something I always, always, always try to get done when I do meal prep is washing and prepping my produce. So I have some broccoli here. We are gonna use this for a side for dinner this week. And broccoli is one of those things that you can wash ahead of time and it stays really well in the refrigerator. So I'm just putting that in my salad spinner. I soak that in some cold water and then let it drain a little bit. And I'm just going to put it in a Ziploc bag. And then when it comes time to make dinner this week, all I have to do is put it in a pan uh, in my steamer basket and boom, I have steamed broccoli. Um, since I'm also going to make some homemade ranch dressing, this will be really good with that if we want to snack on it as well. Uh, I also had some bell peppers that I wanted to get washed up and um, I did get some questions recently on how I wash my produce. So I can't remember if I made a video specifically on that or not. Maybe I should should check on that. I can't, I can't remember. I'll have to look. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. But typically I just soak all of my veggies in cold water in my salad spinner. I let the dirt fall off and then I rinse them and let them dry and chop them up. The only difference would be like for berries and uh, lettuce, I normally use vinegar when I wash my berries, I just make sure I rinse them really well. And then with lettuce, I tend to use lemon juice in the water because it helps the lettuce um, not turn brown so quickly once you cut it and put it in the refrigerator. And the vinegar will help remove some of the invisible dirt um, on the berries as well. So that's what I use. I know a lot of people use different, um, like, you know, they make solutions specifically for produce cleaning. I just use vinegar because it's a household item. I always have it on hand and then I don't have to remember to buy anything extra. So I had this celery that I wanted to get prepped as well. I think I might make some tuna salad this weekend. So that will be good to have on hand for that. I washed my sugar snap peas and my bell peppers and I'm using this Rubbermaid container that is sort of like a crudite um, tray. I will link it down below. It's super inexpensive. I believe it's like only 10 or $11 on Amazon. And I love being able able to prep my veggies and add them in here and then you can also add ranch dressing um, or some type of dip in the middle or you could even add like olives or something like that in the middle if you wanted to and this is super convenient to just have on hand throughout the week it makes for obviously super healthy snacking sometimes i set this out if my kids are complaining that they're hungry and dinner's not ready yet that way they can snack on this so for my ranch dressing i am just going to use some mayo and some buttermilk and I have some um, Hidden Valley Ranch uh, powder like dip mix I guess you could call it seasoning in my pantry that I'm trying to get used up I think I bought this container at Sam's or Costco so I just use one cup of mayo one cup of buttermilk uh, three tablespoons of the ranch mix and then I add a little bit of paprika and pepper and garlic powder and some extra dill just to kind of jazz up the flavor a little bit but that part is optional you can obviously season it to your taste so here is what our veggie tray looks like um, I'll also be using that dressing for salads as well but I've got my bell peppers 
my um, celery and cherry tomatoes and some sugar snap peas. So that will be great to have throughout the week. Okay, so I'm gonna make some blueberry cheesecake and the reason I'm making this is because I have some cream cheese that I got on sale during, actually during Christmas. Um, I seem to collect a few boxes of cream cheese that I need to use up. So I have three boxes of that. And then I also had some blueberries that I wanted to use. So I've got two cups of those. Um, I'll link this recipe down below. I just found one online for blueberry cheesecake. So I have some graham cracker crumbs, some butter for the crust, some sugar, eggs, um, lemon juice, vanilla extract, some sour cream, and then I've got my springform pan here as well. This is a nine inch springform pan. So for the crust, I melted the butter in the microwave and then I've got just a cup and a half of graham cracker crumbs. Obviously you can make your own if you want to, but I didn't have any on hand. So I just bought the crumbs already made for me and I'm gonna add some sugar in there and just mix this up until it all comes together. And then over here, I've got my springform pan. I cut a sheet of parchment paper into a circle and then I just sprayed the bottom with nonstick spray, put the parchment paper, sprayed it again. This just helps to be able to get it up off the bottom of the pan um, once it's baked. So I'm gonna mix this and then press it into uh, the pan and then we'll par bake the crust. So I used a measuring cup to pack the crust down into the bottom of the pan and then that, that also allows you to make the crust on the sides. So it's an easy way to do it. I'm going to wrap this in foil because we're going to end up baking this in a water bath and we'll stick this in the oven for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to make the blueberry sauce. So I've got two cups of blueberries here. I'm going to put these in a saucepan with three tablespoons of sugar and then heat these up. I'm going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch to this just to thicken it and this is a mixture of lemon juice and water. And then I'm just going to cook and stir this until it thickens and the blueberries burst. Okay so what I did was after I cooked the blueberries down I put a sieve over this bowl and basically strained out some of just the blueberry juice part, I guess you would say, I don't know what you call it. And then I separated them and put the blueberries back in here. So what this part is gonna be is the swirl that's gonna go on top of the cheesecake. And then this part will actually be the blueberry topping that you put on once it's finished. So I'm gonna make the uh, cheesecake filling part. So I've got my three packages of cream cheese in here. These have been softened. So I'm just gonna beat these until they're smooth. Okay, I'm gonna add the sugar and then beat that up. Okay, I also added the sour cream and the vanilla extract. And I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time and just beat everything until it's well combined. Okay, so I'm gonna add my filling to the crust. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour, or I'm gonna swirl in the blueberry part. So I need about a quarter cup of it. I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top. And then I'm gonna take a knife and just swirl it through the top like this. So what I've done is I've put my cheesecake in a large roasting pan and I've poured some hot water in the bottom of that. Um, I'm gonna bake this for about 55 minutes and the water bath helps the cheesecake not to crack. 
Okay, so here is what my cheesecake looked like. As you can see, it did not crack. I highly recommend using that water bath technique. I also, uh, once the cheesecake was done cooking, I cracked the oven door and let it sit in the oven for an hour to cool before I removed it. That helps it not to crack as well but i'm going to show you guys what this looks like once i serve it up highly recommend this recipe it turned out so good i wouldn't even say i'm that big of a blueberry fan and this was really delicious so here's what it looked like plated up with some of that extra blueberry compote on top highly recommend this recipe it's super yummy okay so i've had most of the things to make this chex mix since christmas and i've never <laughs> i haven't made it yet so i'm gonna make it now um, so I have a big roasting pan here. This is what I'm going to bake this in. I've got some cashews, some Cheez-Its, oatmeal squares, and some rice checks. Now I would prefer to add pretzels to here, but I don't think I have any right now. I'm going to have to double check in the pantry. Um, but the good thing about this is that you basically just need 18 cups of a mix of like pretzels, Cheez-Its, cereal, nuts, whatever you want to use, and it will all work just fine. Okay, I don't have any pretzels, so that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna improvise. So, like I said, 18 cups of whatever cereal and stuff you want. This is the Quaker oatmeal squares, which this is really good cereal anyway. It's a little bit sweet. It's not super sweet, but I like it in Chex Mix because it's a little bit sweet, and so you get that kind of like sweet and savory uh, flavor. And then I probably just. I'll probably see all of these cashews. How much is that? Oh, about four cups. Okay, so I'm gonna put in a couple of cups of checks. These are rice checks. That's what I prefer to use. I'm gonna add some more rice checks. Cheez Its. I'm gonna put more Cheez Its. And then I'll do the last six cups of cheese. The best thing too about making Chex Mix at home is that you can put whatever you want in it. So, you know, if you don't like peanuts or nuts or you want a different kind of Chex, just do that. Okay, now I'm gonna melt the butter. Okay, so I've got uh, two sticks of melted butter in here. Shh. Don't tell. Okay, so to the butter, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna add three and a half teaspoons of seasoned salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and that's it. I'm gonna whisk this up, make sure all the seasonings and everything are well combined. Okay, now you want to pour the butter mixture evenly over all of your cereal and crackers. And then just toss this like really gently because um, you don't want to crush the cereal, but you want to try and get everything mixed together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bake this at 250 degrees for one hour, and I'm gonna set the timer for every 15 minutes, and every 15 minutes, I'm going to give it a stir. Okay, so here is what my Chex Mix looked like when it came out of the oven. I let it cool and uh, it's really good. I would definitely recommend this particular recipe. I'll type it out in the description box below. One other variation that you could do is to add some hot sauce or some buffalo sauce to the butter mixture as well. I've done that before and it's really good, um, but I'm just going to transfer this from my roasting pan into one of my large uh, Rubbermaid containers. These are, I think, meant for cereal, but I use them for all kinds of things. They're really good to store like pretzels and snack mix in and things like that. Um, I got these in a three pack from Sam's for like $11, so they were pretty inexpensive, but turned out really good. And my family uh, was very glad to have this to snack on for the next couple weeks. All right, so I'm gonna make some freezer breakfast sandwiches just because I have some croissants that I need to use up so these are just from Hy-Vee I actually bought them for a dinner one night this week and the date came to the date the date came to the date 
whatever I'm trying to say. Um, so I put these in the fridge and I'm gonna use them to make some sausage, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwiches. So I have four eggs left, which is the perfect amount. I need to go to the grocery store. Um, I've got my air fryer here because I'm going to cook some of these sausage patties. These are just frozen ones that I get at Walmart. Um, they're really good. So I'm just gonna put four of those into the air fryer here, cook them probably, I don't know, 375 for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna use some of this sharp cheddar cheese from Aldi to assemble them. Okay, so I've got a skillet here. I'm going to spray with some nonstick spray. This is how I'm gonna cook my eggs for the breakfast sandwiches. Um, I was thinking about baking them, but this will be easier since I'm just gonna make four. These croissants are just from the bakery at Hy-Vee. Um, they're actually really good. I, I got them because I was gonna make chicken salad sandwiches one night, but then I just ended up making like turkey. <laughs> turkey and mustard and cheese, and they were just as good because I ran out of time and didn't have time to make chicken salad, but um, I don't want these to go to waste, and I could freeze them, but obviously if I want to uh, make breakfast sandwiches, I can freeze those too. And another thing I was gonna tell you is if you have leftover croissants, um, I have before made like a French toast bake using croissants instead of uh, bread, and it is so good. There's like a blueberry one I found online one time that's really good, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add my sausage. I'm gonna flip my egg. This is not a neat egg contest, by the way. <laughs> so just keep in mind when you're making breakfast sandwiches not to overcook the eggs or anything else for that matter because you're gonna be reheating these probably in the microwave, although you can wrap these in foil and reheat them in the air fryer too. They're really good that way. So I'm gonna add my eggs on top of here. And then I'm just gonna use cheddar cheese, but you could use American cheese. Uh, another thing that's really good on these is pepper jack. So try that. And then I am gonna let these cool a little bit before I um, wrap them up. So if you guys have never tried these pre-cut foil sheets for wrapping, you know, breakfast sandwiches or things like that, they're super convenient. Highly recommend them. Um, I think, I wanna say you can get these at Dollar Tree, um, or at least I found them at my Dollar Tree before, but um, I'm sure you can get them at Walmart or Target or something like that too. So obviously you cannot put foil in the microwave, which is something I feel like I stress to my children on a daily basis. <laughs> a daily basis. Remember, you can't put foil in the microwave. Um, but like I said, you can heat these up in the air fryer or you can just unwrap them from the foil. And then um, I'd probably wrap them up in a paper towel and heat them up in the microwave. And you can either heat them from frozen, but I would probably do it on like 50% power just until they get warmed through. And then if you want to um, thaw them overnight in the fridge, you can do that too. So just take one out, stick it in the fridge the night before you want to eat it. And then in the morning it should be thawed and you can microwave it as usual. I also want to mention these labels. They're actually the Avery <laughs> name tag labels. I can link them down below, but I find these really convenient for labeling like freezer meals and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna put sausage, egg, cheese, 
Sorry, someone's at the door. Murphy's barking. Um, okay. And then, bam. There we go. Meal prep breakfast sandwiches. All right, so I'm gonna prep some ground beef taco meat and I'm gonna make it in the Instant Pot. We're gonna have this for dinner one night this week. And you guys know I always love to make taco meat in my Instant Pot. It's so easy. And this is a three pound roll that I got on sale at Hy-Vee. So I'm gonna cook this up. We won't be able to use this all for one meal, but obviously since I'm prepping it, um, whatever we don't use, I'll be able to freeze. And I've got some Tones uh, taco seasoning here. I got this, I believe at Sam's Club. And then I've got a few packets of seasoning from uh, a Green Chef box to use up as well. This is just like a paprika cumin chili blend or something like that. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to drain this because there's really not much grease in the bottom of there. I'm gonna add this uh, cumin, paprika, whatever seasoning. I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of water. And you could measure this if you want to, but um, I'm not going to because I'm a rebel like that. Uh, okay, I'm going to stir this up and I'm just going to cook this on high pressure for four minutes. And I know that doesn't sound like very long, uh, but it's just enough to get the meat tender. And then I'll taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning at that point. Okay, so I realized that I totally forgot to show you guys the completed taco meat because I packed it up and then we ended up eating it one night <laughs> this week for dinner. And after we ate it for one night for dinner and I gave leftovers to Adam one day for lunch, this is all that's left. <laughs> so I was going to freeze some like I told you guys, but I just... I don't think this is worth freezing because I feel like we'll eat this within the next few days anyway. But I just wanted to mention, um, and I don't do this enough either, but you can prep ground beef, like cook it, and the Instant Pot is actually a great way. And then you can either have it in the refrigerator to make a quick meal with, or you can also freeze it and then just pull it out of the freezer, thaw it, and make whatever you want with it. Chili, spaghetti, tacos, whatever. So anyway. That's all that's left of this. Pretty unimpressive, but I just wanted to mention that. All right, so I'm gonna make this uh, ranch and bacon pasta salad, this suddenly salad. I think I got this at the grocery store on sale and it's been sitting in my pantry for a while, so I want to get it used up. Um, we'll probably use this either for a salad for dinner this week or for lunches. Adam really likes this. You can take it for his lunches this week too. So I've got just a pot of water here saucepan that is boiling so I'm gonna add the pasta to that and then we'll make up the dressing okay so in this bowl I've got the um, seasoning mixture for the pasta salad you need half a cup of mayo which I don't think I have quite half a cup in this jar so I'm gonna take some out of here or the rest of it out of here rather and then I'm probably gonna use about a quarter cup of sour cream out of this container and then when I make this I like to add just a couple tablespoons of milk this makes the dressing a little bit creamier and it also um, kind of helps the pasta salad from getting brown not getting brown <laughs> getting dry too dry <laughs> brown oh my gosh Okay, I'm gonna add my pasta to here. Okay, and I'm just gonna give this a stir. There's a recipe on the back of here where you can put cheese and cut up turkey and cherry tomatoes. No, I, I feel like maybe I wanna do that, but I'm gonna think about it for a second. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna add some extras to this. So I just have some Colby Jack cheese here. Um, I'm just gonna cube this up a little murphy. He's like, oh, I would like some cheese. And a piece of cheese, Murphy. So I'm gonna add these to my pasta salad. And then, oh, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra bacon bits too. Cause I feel like they're pretty skimpy in there right now. So the last thing that I'm gonna add to this is some peas. And these are just frozen peas. I just, I found them in the bottom of my freezer actually. And I just soaked them in cold water for a little bit just to thaw them out. And they'll finish thawing in the fridge. 
Um, especially with this salad, you don't wanna eat it right away because you need time for the flavors to kind of meld together. Okay, so here is my pasta salad. I um, added a little bit of dried parsley to the top and some extra pepper, and I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and we'll have it for the rest of the week. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me on today's video. Don't forget to check out Ladder. I will have the link and all of the information in the description box below. Let me know if you want to try any of these recipes and I will see you in my next video. Bye.